All right, we are T minus 15 minutes on my launch of Spite, the biggest, fastest rocket I have ever made. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is actually gonna <laughs> I only decided I was gonna build her about three weeks ago. Well, no, I decided I wanted to build her probably like 10 months ago when I was at a rocket event helping a bunch of my friends and uh, this lady wouldn't let me be in the group picture because I was the PR girl and I hated that because I was like there as engineering support. And anyway, I left that event being like, screw this, I wanna build a all carbon minimum diameter rocket that just like pushes my limits, it flexes a little bit, and it's gonna be all motor, it's gonna go really fast and really high. And so, neat spite, she's flying an M2080 Skidmark and projected to go to 22,000 feet at Mach 2. And we'll see how it goes. I had three big goals with this rocket. I wanted to break Mach 2 and 20,000 feet, build it all in just shy of three weeks, and the last one is a new one for me, maintain some kind of work-life balance during the build, meaning not skipping the things that keep me sane, like hiking and climbing and seeing friends, and that means making a really strict launch campaign calendar and sticking to it. 10 out of 10 recommends that as a first step. Anyway, the first big build step was laying out the carbon fiber for my fins. I decided to make my own for two equally good reasons. One is that the dimensions I needed in dragon plate were hundreds of dollars I didn't really want to spend. And the second was that Joe from BBS Space and I were chatting really late one night and he said, and I quote, true hot girl shit is laying up your own fin plates. I've literally never seen anyone do that. And so here we are. And for those of you unfamiliar with internet rocketry culture, I feel the need to clarify that hot girl shit applies to any and all rockets that go zoom really, really fast and has actually nothing to do with the gender or appearance of the people making the rockets. Anyway, to make sure that my plates are perfectly flat, I laid them out on a piece of glass I definitely didn't steal from my outdoor table. And once the spider webs were cleaned off, I painted it with some mold release and it's time to grab that bottle tote resin and get to mixing. And I want to point out, I just confirmed with TotalBud that to their knowledge, I'm the first person to fly their epoxy supersonic. So I really feel like I deserve a cookie or something for that, but please drop a comment if you beat me to it. I won't send you a cookie, but maybe they will. Like with every layup I ever do, I'm using a two to one high performance resin, but for this, I'm gonna use medium hardener since it's actually got the highest tensile, flexural, and compressive strength of the three available hardeners. And since I'm gonna be bonding my tip-to-tip -tip layup directly against the fin plates, I don't want it to be smooth like the glass. And so I laid down some peel ply to give it a flat, bondable texture instead. And then I did a really standard wet layup over that, just like I've done like a million times on this channel. So once all the layers were down, I added another sheet of peel ply, some plastic to keep it from sticking, and then a flat surface I weighed down with sandbags and left it for the weekend while I took the teardrop trailer camping. Uh, it really is that simple. If you get anything from this channel, I hope it's that composites really aren't that hard and you can absolutely DIY it and save a ton of money. And also be a hot girl. Well, putting your emotions into a sexy rocket and lighting it on fire is certainly an option that I support. More than that, I support the responsible option, which is therapy. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. I personally use therapy for everything, from navigating hard work decisions to relationships and making life choices. I find it wildly useful to have an impartial professional to bounce ideas off of, share my feelings with and dissect them, and then decide how I'm going to proceed in a healthy way for me. Therapy isn't just for you if you have a clinical mental health issue like depression or anxiety. We are all humans who live in a complicated and changing world, and therapy can give you tools to navigate your life in a healthier, happier way. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be really, really hard, especially when you're limited to options in your area. BetterHelp is an online platform designed to make finding a remote therapist easier by matching you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days based on a few questions you answer when you sign up. Go to betterhelp.com slash Zyla to both support this channel and get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. And because finding a therapist is a little like dating, if you don't really fit with that therapist, which is super common in therapy, you can easily switch to a therapist for free without stressing about insurance, using your network, or anything like that. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel. No like this candle. All right, moment of truth. I was making glossy.
Not bad though. And with my cheap DIY carbon plate in hand, I ran over to my uh, slightly less cheap and slightly less DIY Toromok CNC machine to cut these fins out. In all seriousness though, a huge thank you to Toromok for working with this channel and providing me this machine, cause damn, look at those fins. To make the fin jig, I cut and laminated some MDF panels together and ran that block over to the CNC. And I've actually never seen anyone use this design before, but basically I cut out a half circle that is the diameter of my rocket tube minus like half of the width of the fins. And that should give me a perfect like 90 degree layup. Before I could actually start gluing any of the fins down though, I had to first cut the body tube down to size just so I wasn't wrangling more tube than I really need to, and also do all of the bond prep on both the fins and the body tube. And that's just like a fancy word for saying that I sanded it. And once I'm done sanding, I generally clean up with IPA. And unfortunately, I'm not talking about the fun stuff, I'm talking about isopropyl alcohol. And alas, sometimes the perfect clamping fixture requires drilling holes in your perfectly good saw horses. We gotta do what we gotta do. Once I had everything exactly where I wanted it, then I could go mix some epoxy and get ready to actually root bond this thing. The key to root bonding is to get the fins perfectly straight. Like none of these glue joints actually have to be structural. That's what the fillets are for later. Uh, but what I need to do particularly with this fin jig is make sure that those fins are clamped down as flat as they possibly can be. And once those two are cured, I could flip it 90 degrees, cut another hole in my perfectly good sawhorse, and poke the fins through the fin jig and glue the next set on at 90 degrees. All right, I'm here to brag. This is some hot girl energy right here. Okay, so we're at zero degrees on this fin. Zero degrees on the body tube. If we go over to this fin, oh, you probably can't really see that. You can start zero degrees. That perfectly straight. Let's go! I am stoked. This looks so good. Like, I've seen a lot of rockets in this stage, and this is. Better not screw it up from here. That'd be really sad. For the fillets, I started by masking off the bond surfaces, and yes, I'm using popsicle sticks as a spacer. They're like the right width. Give me a break. Um, and then I took a dance break, of course, the most important part. Carefully sanded them, and then wiped them all down with alcohol. And for my bonds and fillets, I'm using Thixo by Bottle Toad. It's their super easy to use fiberglass reinforced epoxy. And my favorite part is that it doesn't sag, so you can rotate the fin can and do them all at once instead of waiting for it to cure in between, like you do with rocket epoxy. In every other video on my channel, you've seen me dye all my fillets fun colors and sparkles, which helps me keep track of batches and cure times. But unfortunately, since I'm not painting this rocket, I had to dye all the batches black so they blend in and look sleek with that really sexy carbon fiber. Once the fillets are placed, I peeled up the masking tape and let the epoxy cure. Thixo only takes a few hours to cure, so later that night I was able to get sanding, and I personally am not afraid of using some power on these, although I do know a lot of racketeers who prefer to hand sand everything. I will say though, for sanding fillets, I recently discovered these little abrasive buff wheels, and they are absolutely game changing, so I will drop a link for them in the description below. Once everything was smooth, I gave it a good cleanup, and it's time to tip to tip this fin cam. Okay, this part is super nerve wracking. So what's going on here is that it is, 12.45 in the morning, Friday, June 23rd. Launch day is July 1st. And I really need to get this tip to tip done before I go to bed so that it can cure while I am snoozling. But this is a very high pressure tip to tip because this is the last of my carbon fiber. All right, the way I explained it to camera made zero sense, so I'll try again here. Basically, the way these fin shapes stack is four across this length that I'm cutting, but each layup is only three sheets, which is unfortunate because I wanted to cut them out wet to avoid frayed edges. So with my strip ready, I mixed up that epoxy, mixed it up real good. Fun fact, epoxy cures better the more fun you have mixing it. Now you know. 
and then I got to wetting out my carbon. And once my carbon was fully wet out, I laid down my template and then cut around it with electric scissors. And electric scissors, by the way, are like the most game-changing tool in composites. I cannot recommend them enough. I will link them down below. I'm not trying to sell you stuff. I just like, they're, they're so helpful. Anyway, um, I cut them out and then I get these nice clean edges that I can lay down on my fin can. And I did that three more times. And the problem here is that uh, I, the three times was great, but then the fourth one had to be on a new set and it was already starting to kick and I ran out of time. Not good. That was humbling. I need to rethink my strategy because that didn't work. 1.30 in the morning brain. What are we gonna do? Okay, new plan. I thought about it. I'm going to tape off the sections, cut it dry, wet layup, but because there will be masking tape, it won't get all over the place. That's the plan. So with this new plan, I was able to wet out each of the carbon sheets individually and lay them up, which means that I wasn't racing the epoxy cure time quite as much, and that worked way better. And so the next morning, while the epoxy was still green, and yes, that means I only got like three or four hours of sleep that night, I was able to use a box cutter to cut off all of the excess carbon, and that cleaned up the fin can quite a bit. So now I can do the rest of it with a sander. To shape the leading and trailing edges, I made this little wooden sanding block out of just an old piece of 2x4, uh, but to be completely honest, it was a pain in the butt, it took forever, and the sandpaper kept falling out, so I gave up and switched to an electric sander. <laughs> With the fin can done, it was time to move on to the bulkheads. So I cut these out of carbon plate as well on the CNC, and then I cleaned them up a bit before gluing them in. I opted to do like a poor woman's aero pack here, which is simply a bulkhead with a center hole for an eye bolt that connects for the motor to go through. And with a hefty fillet, I don't foresee the need for a full aero pack. And it saves so much space inside the rocket for parachutes and other goodies. Okay, so the bulkhead on here with no washers is a good tight fit. Um, but I actually, I want like, hmm, maybe a, full turn of extra space so that I can actually tighten this in a little bit. Like I don't want it to bottom out. So I'm gonna put two washers on here temporarily for when I glue this in and then when I actually fly it, those washers will come out. Wow, that's so satisfying. Oh my God, it looks like a rocket. It looks like a rocket, it looks so good. I got a lot of space. This is so much better than an aero pack. With the motor back out, I did some bond prep with one of those abrasive buff wheel thingamabobs I talked about earlier. And then I cleaned it up and put in a line, like a ring of epoxy where the motor is gonna slide back in. It is so hard to see, but there is a bead of epoxy. Don't screw this up, Zyla. With the motor in there as placeholder, I was able to screw the eye bolt and the bulkhead in where they're going to sit in their permanent location and then just go in and add an extra fillet. But since I couldn't even see what I was doing, it was like really impossible to film, I'm sorry. <laughs> Moving on to the avionics bay, this is gonna be the only part of the rocket that's not carbon because you can't really get GPS and telemetry data through a carbon Faraday cage. So the nose cone is actually fiberglass and the avionics sled and bulkhead I'm cutting here out of thin plywood. The main structure of it is this piece of quarter 20 rod that I cut down. And what's really clever about this design, if I may say so myself, is that that quarter 20 rod threads into the nose cone piece perfectly. And so what I'm actually gonna do is while the rocket is sitting on the pad to turn on and arm my avionics, I can actually unscrew the nose cone piece, take the whole nose cone off, like have access to all of the flight computers at once, and then I can just slide the nose cone back on and then screw it on and everything is perfect and ready to go and there's no switches sticking out to the outside of the rocket. And while the nose cone is off, the thing that's holding the structure together is the shear pins. So I'm drilling shear pin holes here now. The downside of having the avionics in the nose cone though is that 
it's dual SEP, dual deploy, which means that there will be a separation of two body tubes of rocket where there's a wire running through because it had to reach like the other section that separated to deploy the charges. And so I had to make this really complicated bulkhead that has wires passing through it and those wires have connectors on the end. And the idea is that when the charge deploys and it blows those two sections of tube together, the wires will just slide out at the connector and then the whole thing can be reused. And now it's a tube-in connector. And with the wiring pretty much done, I headed over to my friend Joe's house from BPS Space to have a little avionics party and also a little motor, motor integration party. Okay, and, and action. Okay. okay and, and action. Hey, okay, wait, too. and, and, okay, quiet on the set, please. Can I get a quiet on the set? Quiet on the set. Okay, quiet on the set, please. What up gamers? <laughs> Let's build this avionics sled today! Woo! Woo! Yeah! So what we're doing right now is I'm taking all of my flight computers that I have already programmed, woo and just sticking them onto this very small piece of wood. That's it. So, um, yeah, it just efficiently, and then I'm gonna stick a backup GPS on here, and uh, that's it. Beautiful! <laughs> well, that's, that's some of the best YouTube content I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have our telemetrum here, which is our primary flight computer. It is going to log all of the data, and it is also what I am hoping will deploy the charges. But then as a backup, we have the Easy Mini, which is all it is, is like a, am I at this altitude? Should I deploy a charge? Yes. Go. Boom. Um, so it only knows altitude. It doesn't know, it doesn't know GPS. The telemetrum is sending us GPS data, so that's going to be how we find the rocket. The telemetrum kicks the bucket, then we throw this little spot in there. Basically, all I need my avionics bay to do is tell me where it is, and then it has to tell itself when to deploy the charges for the drogue and the main. Um, drogue will get deployed at apogee, and then the main will get deployed at 200 meters. Ah, it's motor integration day, let's do this. Also, um, the key to a successful motor, motor integration is doing it at your friend's house. So if it blows up, it blows up your friend's garage and not your garage. Hello! This is a large box of explosives and what's really fun is that it's not one. This was supposed to look like really suave. Two. Okay, just don't. There we go. Three. It's actually good for the motor when you slam it on. <laughs> yeah, I know. It absolutely. Six grains. Woo! 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 This is so exciting because the grains are so skinny. It's so much propellant. Tap the focus. Oh, tap the focus. Look at that. That's all so of this, pretty. Yeah, so it's like all the shit in the skin work that makes it a skin work. That's really cool. Um, grain going in. All right, so the lube is basically so that the liner can come out of the motor after we've launched it and it doesn't become like a permanent fixture into the motor case because the motor case is $600 and I want to use it again. You ready? We're ready. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow, it's like, it takes effort. This is harder than it's been before. Dude, this is a lot of effort. It's probably fine. Perfect. You ready? Jesus Dude. Christ. Yeah, that works. Send it. Oh man, I love when stuff like this works. <laughs> oh! Gosh. Okay, is your nozzle fine? The nozzle's fine. Okay, so it just slipped it just off? It just slipped off, yeah. Okay, you're almost there, dude. It's happening. One, One two, two, three, push! push. <laughs> That's working. Okay. All right. One, two, three, push! <laughs> nice! That was a good one. That was a good one. I'm preparing I to be a father. I can see the head. <laughs> Hammer, time. Hammer time. All right. Yeah. Can't tell if it's moving at all. It's like Get in there. Bop, bop, bop. Okay, wait, stop for a second. 
All right, Zyla, what's popping? That was the hardest motor I've ever integrated. It, Joe, do you say the same thing? Yeah, no, I, 100%. Um, yeah, so the motor liner, like, I don't know, was too big, maybe? Because the grain slid really easily into the motor liner, but then the motor liner did not slide really easily into the case, which means that deintegrating this bad boy is gonna require, I don't actually wanna think about that. For now, the motor is integrated and it only required a ratchet strap, some Kevlar line, a hammer, a dead blow, some actually old pieces of Yeetmus fins, you know, everything. We're using the whole <laughs> kitchen sink right here. And so the next step is we just need to put on the nozzle like retaining ring thing um, and the circle that has the O-rings. I don't know what it's called. And then on this side, the forward closure, and then we'll be good to go. Then you got a motor. And then we have a motor. Woo! We'll go boom, boom. Okay, if it looks like my fourth outfit of the day, it is, and it's because I'm not good at planning and I also didn't want to cut carbon in a crop top, so here we are. Anyway, um, I've been putting off mounting this camera for the entirety of this project because I built a minimum diameter carbon M2080 motor rocket and I'm like polishing it and except that I need to stick a camera out the side, which means I have to cut a hole in my perfectly good rocket and it's hurting my soul. I just got the Insta360 GO 3, which is like this super tiny camera. So at least the hole is not gonna be that big. You know what? Hot glue rhymes with Mach 2 for a reason. And that's gonna be the mantra from here on out. I did this right until now. It's time for the hot glue. Hated that. Did you hate that? We both hated that. That's surprisingly good. I feel insane. Have I lost it? I'm like gonna hot glue a $400 camera into a rocket at Mach 2. Thank you, Insta360, for the camera. And that's our camera harness. Okay, ah, fuck it, I'm done. Hot glue with Mach 2, everybody! Okay, so I need to drill shear pin holes real quick before we ground test. So it is now L minus two, which is a really good day to ground test because you have a little bit of time to fix things if they go wrong, but the rocket should be pretty much flight ready by then. So uh, I basically needed to drill the shear pin holes and pack all the parachutes and assemble it as if it was going to fly. And what we're gonna do is use the flight computers to deploy the charges and make sure that all the charges will go off and deploy the parachutes appropriately. Before screwing the shear pins in, I did a continuity check on all of the raceway wires that run through the inside of the rocket as well. Once my rocket was fully assembled, I snuck it into my neighbor's backyard because she has grass in her backyard and mine is all concrete and it's just a lot easier to do this on grass. So I set up a little test stand in her backyard and got to ground testing. The Telemetrum software has a ground test mode that lets you arm and fire black powder charges while the rocket is still horizontal. Arm and fire. Okay. All right, main, arm, ready, and fire. Okay, so it's time for the decal on and I couldn't decide which way to go. I think it's this way, but I asked Instagram, so I did like a little Instagram poll and uh, the internet agrees with me. So 77% of people think that it should go this way.
It's a little like straight. Still not perfect. perfect. <laughs> no one's fully straight, okay? <laughs> Happy Pride. <laughs> So this is a flyaway rail guide, and basically for like, because this is a minimum diameter rocket, uh, and I want it to go all the way to Mach 2, I don't want these rail buttons to add drag to the rocket once it's like actually left the rail. So what this does is it holds the rocket in place, and then as soon as it departs the rail, this these springs will pop it open and it'll just fly off the rocket. Um, and then the rocket can go another 20,000 feet without draggy buttons and it makes good sounds. When I got a robotics scholarship, I was like, I'm never gonna run again. The Perseverance parachutes were packed to the density of oak. But this is the best I can do. All right, so to make the igniters, we just need our black powder and we need our igniters and then we need to Oh, wait, I can go through the hole. It's really expensive to build these projects and sponsorships don't always cover the cost of materials. If you want to support this channel, please consider joining my Patreon or you can buy my sick merch that I designed. I'm just saying. Difficult and that is a fully integrated rocket! Woo! Let's go! Ah! This is fight. <laughs> Yo, come here, come here, come here. I want you to see some engineering genius. Ready? Uh. <laughs> That's all. Bye, fight. See you in the Mojave. Ready? <laughs> let me sit. Well, I want to shake your hand. Let me, let me shake your hand. Wow, look at how clean that is. Her name is Bite. <gasps> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It's perfect. Look it, look it, look it. You know what's great about this is you probably did want like a little shim in there too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Whoop. <laughs> Zyla, this is amazing. Nice work, dude. Thank you. Okay. So you're sure you're on channel zero? Sure I'm on channel zero. I feel like this is like a worked tow dungeon. Okay. There it is. 
Yeah. built different. We are T minus 30 minutes of the largest motor I have ever lit in my life. I'm like surprisingly calm, actually. Girls launching rackets! <laughs> What's the word, Kyle? Continuity on Apogee, continuity on Bane. Uh, it looks pretty good. Bye, Spy. It's all fun and games when you're in the shop, and then you get out of here, and it's like there's 15 people, 20 people asking you what's going on, and it's suddenly like... It doesn't matter how well prepared you are for a rocket launch. This is like $3,000 worth of stuff. I'm gonna light on fire. Continuity check. We're good to go! Fly high, Spite. Do it. Do it. Spite launch in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hot glue at Mach 2. Oh, wow. oh, she did. Oh, she did great. <laughs>